one. So I was hesitant as to whether or not I wanted to put this in the taking one for the team series because the Lancome Absolute Powder Radiant Smoothing Powder is not outrageously expensive, but it's $60 for um, not a lot of powder. Let me see if I can find exact grams. 0.352 ounces or 10 grams. It's pretty expensive. So I'm gonna put it, I've decided, as we can tell by the title over my head, I did decide to put it in taking one for the team because this is a commitment. So for the purposes of this video, I actually just filmed a video that you will see either later this week or next week. So if you like this eye look, please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And I've done all my makeup except highlighter and a finishing or set, not, no, I did my setting powder, a finishing powder. So I can demonstrate for you the uses of this powder and stay tuned till the end so you'll find out whether or not I think it is worth the price tag. I also have a few products to compare it to. So let's talk about this guy. This is, comes in this nice silver shiny box. I got mine at Nordstrom. I got it in the shade Absolute Pesh, which is more of a golden undertone. It does come in golden as well, which is actually a little bit more pinky. There are in total six shades, which makes this kind of unique to other finishing powders that are generally just a translucent shade. So you can kind of pick a shade to either complement your skin tone or go with the effect that you're trying to achieve with your skin, which reminds me of another powder that sort of pioneered this concept. The Hourglass powders, mine is filthy. So Hourglass has a very similar concept in that you pick a finishing powder that has some radiance to it, that has different tones depending on the effect that you're looking for for the powder to do, whether you wanna warm it up, um, get rid of sallowness, have a candlelight effect, so forth and so on. So this powder, let's do a little demo. It comes in this kind of, it's not, it's not glass. It looks like it's frosted glass. It's definitely plastic. It comes with a very pretty puff, which I would never use to cake this on would be insane. It is marketed as a smoothing powder that will remove pore, not remove, but hide the evidence of pores, make your skin look smooth, it's hydrating, it's recommended for more mature skin, uh, it lends a radiance without allegedly being glittery. We shall see. Obviously, I've been using this for some time. I like to tap some off in the cap there, which under these lights is pretty hard to find. I don't use a lot. Sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot, I promise. There you go, you can see it there. Big fluffy brush. And so what we're gonna do first, I just swirl it around in there, I really get it in the brush. I don't really wanna tap it off at $60 for 10 grams, but so I'm wearing um, Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation, which is more of a satiny, satin to matte finish, not full on matte, demi matte, shall we say? And I just swipe it across. everywhere. I don't do it under my eyes. Now I have dry skin, so I'm not really worried about oil or looking too shiny. There is some shine happening. Not shine. I don't have any highlighter on. Can you see there is some sheen, gleam, dare I say radiance, to the skin? But it's not glittery. It's, it is pretty. Now I have tried also using it as a highlighter. Here's where it gets interesting. If you want a very strong highlighter, using it in a traditional powder form with a dry brush, you need to use a dense brush to get a really strong highlighter effect. But I've also found that it doesn't stick around for very long this way. If you really want that high beam from outer space type effect, you need a damp beauty blender and you need to put it on that way. If you want a more subtle highlight, don't use as dense of a highlight brush. Use a fan brush, use a slightly fluffier brush. So you can see it's pretty light on my skin. I did use a self tanner so my foundation already is a little light on me. Um, so this isn't the best color match right now. I think you can see now. That is a highlight. It doesn't have any noticeable 
glitter, but there is a radiance to it that is beyond a normal finishing powder. So real quickly, final thoughts. Do I think I work? Do I think it's worth it? Who do I think it's meant for? Does it make my skin look poreless and smooth and all that? Okay, let's just address what's printed on the front of the jar, shall we? Okay, radiant. Is it radiant? Well, certainly it's radiant. I mean, look at me. Yes, it's radiant. Is it smoothing? Absolutely not. Because of how radiant it is, it's going to emphasize every bump, every pore, any kind of texture that you have on your face. So unless you have perfectly smooth skin, I wouldn't say flawless as far as, um, you know, anything that foundation or concealer can hide, that's, you're going to be fine. But if you have any kind of uneven surface on your skin, blemishes, bumps, pores, what have you, no, it's going to emphasize every hill and dale on your face. Um, I imagine if you have stronger wrinkles, it would emphasize that as well. So it is not for anyone with uneven texture, deeply defined wrinkles. I would say absolutely not. It is an interesting concept in that it is more versatile than a typical finishing powder because you could use it as a finishing powder and as a highlighter. And I like that it comes in six shades. So you have, you can use it in a variety of ways. However, it is still $60. And there is something pretty comparable. I think Hourglass has some options. They have their new powder, the, um, you think I'd know by now, the translucent setting powder. No, it doesn't have the shade range, but it is a very similar texture. It is similarly milled. It has some luminescence to it. It is more traditional of a powder. Um, it, it feels more like a translucent powder. It's not quite as finely milled. It's not as radiant, but then again, it's not gonna show every bump and pore in your skin. You can get some radiance, but I don't think you you could get a subtle highlight out of it, but you're not gonna get like a full-on highlight like I'm getting right here. But then you could also grab one of their um, ambient lighting powders that's pressed, and I feel like you could do double duty, maybe not with this particular shade. This is luminous light, but you probably could get a similar look with some of the other shades in the range. So there's that, and again, far less expensive than the Lancome one. Laura Mercier makes, um, you know, they make the, her classic translucent setting powder. She has a translucent glow. I've only played with it in store. It's not exactly the same, but it's a very similar concept to um, the Lancome. Again, closer to the hourglass version. I would say, the Laura Mercier one from my just playing around with it at, at the counter is like a marriage between the Lancome and the Hourglass. If you if you mix these two together, if they had a baby, you'd get the Laura Mercier translucent glow. So maybe that might be more your thing. And it's a much more, I wouldn't say reasonable, but it's closer in price point to like the Hourglass, I would say. It's probably, I'm guessing, more in the $40 range than the $60 range. So there's a bit of a savings. So I think I just answered my own question. Do I think it's worth it? Unless you're an extreme makeup collector and you feel like there's just a hole in your collection and you're just dying to try this, I don't think it's worth it. I can tell you I've gone to the Lancome counter at Macy's and at Nordstrom and they've both given me a healthy sample to play with before I purchase this. So if you're that curious, you could probably go to either of those places or Sephora and get it and try it before you commit to, to go getting this, to go getting, to go to purchasing it. There you go. I feel like I will reach for this more in the winter months when I see my skin get dull, when I feel like I do need that extra oomph. But knowing what I know now, I would not have bought this. Um, I'm not going to return it. I'll use it up. But I don't feel like I was missing anything by not having this. Personally, when I want to add a little more glow to my skin, I reach for the Luminous Light Hourglass. Or if I want a little more coverage, my setting or finishing powder of choice is the It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation Illumination um, option in the shade Fair. This is actually my second one. So those are, this is a lot heavier. This is actually a foundation. So I just use it as, I mean, look at that pigmentation. So I use a light hand and just all over, but that's what I reach for. I'd rather just have a highlighter to be a highlighter and a finishing or setting powder to be a finishing or setting powder. I don't need to have a, um, my makeup do double duty. I have enough room for more, for more in my collection. So in case it was not clear, is it worth it? No, I do not think it is. I think there are lots of other options out there. 
Um, there's probably some drugstore options as well. Um, Milani makes a setting powder or a, like a compact like this in a glow version. And Flower, I think, makes a loose powder in a um, glowy version as well. I haven't tried those, so I can't say for certain, but there's definitely some things to explore out there. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm excited because our local Nordstrom just opened a whole, they totally remodeled their beauty section and in store, I'm so excited, they have Charlotte Tilbury. It's the only Charlotte Tilbury counter in San Antonio. I think it's the whole line. Um, they have a Sicily counter, they have Tom Ford. Well, I've seen Tom Ford before. There's a lot of luxury brands that I've not seen in person. And so I'm dying to get in there and like start playing with stuff. So let me know if there's something, oh, they have by Terry. I've never seen by Terry, like the whole line in person. So if there's anything from one of those bigger luxury brands that you want me to play with next, please let me know. Um, happy to do that for you. Maybe not in July. I think my taking one for the team is going to be a really big Nordstrom anniversary haul or two. So we're probably skipping taking one for the team in July and we can reconvene maybe August, maybe September because that anniversary sale goes into August and I might do one last push in August. So yeah, I'm just thinking about where I want to put my shopping dollars and Although there's beauty in the Nordstrom sale and those brands do have beauty. We'll see. Let me get my hands on a catalog and see what's coming up and we shall see. But anyway, thank you for watching um, another series. Do though, really seriously, let me know if there's anything from any brand really that you're interested in me taking a look at for you in these Taking One for the Team series. They are a lot of fun to film and it's a good excuse to play with ridiculously expensive makeup. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.